Hey everybody from this beautiful warm evening here in New Zealand, really lovely weather. As you know from my previous videos, ZWO have announced that they will implement an equatorial mode for their Seastar range of telescopes. And I am pleased to say that we've been beavering away since that last video on the changes needed for that, and we've been making some great progress, and the results are pretty impressive. I think equatorial mode will be a very popular addition to Seastar, and one that will open up a whole new area of capability for these little telescopes. Now, I did say I would share more as we progress, and uh, as we move through to a test release, I thought I'd do another video. So this video is a kind of part two to my previous one, and today I'm gonna to cover off some details of my ongoing tests, plus give you a first glimpse of how you're gonna set up and align Seastar in equatorial mode, and there's been some clever thinking gone into the tools that will be on offer. I'm very excited. As always, I'm going to dig into it and let you have a look at this. It's a really hot topic right now, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, my name's Simon, welcome to AstroWorks, your friendly guide to the world of astronomy, full of hints and tips of how to get the best out of this amazing hobby. Now, if you watched my last video, we covered some news of ZWO's forthcoming equatorial mode, uh, what it does, why you might want to use it, and the pros and cons of equatorial mounted telescopes. And we also looked at some of the results from my first tests. If you missed that video, I've included a link above, so do go and watch that if you missed it, as that's a good place to start and I'll answer quite a few questions already. Since that video went up, we've been busy designing and building the equatorial mode feature and the additional tools that we'll include to help you with polar alignment, which is a, a key feature if we want to build a complete standalone equatorial mode that is easy to use even for for beginners. I'm pleased to say that we've made some huge progress over the past weeks and the good news is is that I don't think we're a million miles away from having this ready for the beta testers. So today I thought I would walk you through how you're going to set up Seastar, what additional items you're going to need to make EQ mode work and show you how some of the polar alignment works and including some of the results from my test center few things that I've experienced during the testing over the past weeks. I'll caveat this video by saying this is still an in-development feature, so what you see here might look slightly different from the initial production release, but the bulk of what you see in this feature right now will be what you see in the production, and even after its initial release, I'm sure ZWO will continue to fine-tune the look and feel of equatorial mode based on your feedback. So, with that said, let's take a look at setting up your C-Star for equatorial mode. Now, if you recall from my previous video, one of the main requirements you're going to need is the ability to mount the C-Star body at the right angle to allow it to operate in equatorial mode. And that means reorientating the body. There are various ways to do this, and I've tried a couple of different ones here over the past months, but for now, I've settled on the use of a small wedge designed for camera trackers. But that's mostly due to the lightweight nature of these wedges and my need to keep bringing this in and out of the house during tests, sometimes multiple times a night. Uh, I have a Skywatcher one here, but I've seen various unbadged ones on the market and even some vendors selling metal ones. And it doesn't really matter what brand it is as long as you can elevate the Seastar body and provide a level of adjustment in azimuth and elevation. There is one thing to look out for with these wedges though, in that on some models, the body of the Seastar will catch the clamp knob on the base of the unit and prevent the sea star from turning fully as during the night. Uh, I have replaced this on mine with a long bolt as you can see behind me and that's a short-term fix. I did see someone selling handles and clamps for these on Amazon but in New Zealand these will take a little while longer to arrive from overseas so that's a luxury I can wait on for now. Another option I've seen was someone used a 3D printed block to raise the sea star up off the saddle but I haven't really found this necessary necessary, just use a longer bolt or a clamp that will clear the bottom of the sea star and use that to replace the small knob with the kit. By the way, the thread of this Skywatcher clamp is an 8mm thread and you'll need something about 40mm long if you're using a bolt or an adjustable clamp. It might also be that your wedge or mount will clear the base of the sea star out of the box, so I do recommend you do a check fit well before your first night out using equatorial mode. Another option would be to use the head of an equatorial telescope mount along with a Vixen bar and an adapter bracket if you don't fancy buying an additional accessory. 
but if you want something lightweight, then the camera tracker wedge here works really, really well. I've tried the equatorial telescope mount too, and that works just as well, just not as light as the wedge. Another discussion I saw recently was around tripods, and would the standard tripod on the Seastar 50 be stable enough to support equatorial mode? Well, I've been doing some tests on that, which I'll dump into another video, but from my tests, I think that the standard tripod will work for some latitudes, but not for others. At my latitude of 43 south, I found this to be a bit unstable with the Seastar 50, while the Seastar 30 was fine in use due to the much smaller body size. In my setup, I'm using a small carbon fiber tripod that I use in my photography, and it's got a 3.8 thread on the top that I can screw the wedge to. This also has a benefit in that I can undo this small collar at the top of the tripod and rotate the wedge without having to move the tripod at all. And then I can just use the azimuth adjustment screws for that sort of final fine adjustment. And I found this method to work really, really well and be more than adequate to get a good quality alignment as the results in this video will show. Let's take a look at how Seastar itself mounts to the wedge, as I know this has been a hot topic too on the Facebook groups. In the official EQ mode, Seastar needs to be mounted with the power switch facing upwards and the body aligned to the pole. The Seastar 30 mounts with the small black panel facing up and the body pointed at the pole. With the Seastar 50, the power button panel mounts upwards in a similar fashion, but this is the wider part of the body, so it looks a little different from the Seastar 30 as you can see in the video here. The app will remind you too of the orientation when you open the mount app control panel. As I mentioned earlier, the angle that the body needs to be elevated to is equal to your latitude. So, how can you set that up? Some mounts already have a little angle readout on the side like this Skywatch on here, but they're not very accurate, so is there a better way? And the answer, of course, is yes, and we've built this into the Seastar app. CWO have come up with a clever little inbuilt tool for setting your Seastar to the right latitude angle. Buried deep inside Seastar is a gyro compass, and this is capable of reading the angle of the body versus the surface of the Earth. CWO have cleverly used the gyro compass to allow you to carry out initial alignment of the mount to the right angle, and I'll show you how to do that now. The first setting setting up EQ mode is to get to the Advanced Features tab and then to Mount Mode. And this is where you'll see the mode that the Seastar is currently in. And right now, this is set to Alt As Mode. Now tap Mount Mode and enter the Setup menu. Here you'll see the main screen of the Polar Alignment Tools. A good tip to remember here is that you can do the setup during the day, and then you'll only need to do it once if you want to remain in EQ mode when you shut down. On startup, Seastar reads your GPS location and calculates the angle to the celestial pole for your location, and the polar tool shows that here. You can see that my latitude angle is 44 degrees, so the body needs to be elevated to 44 degrees using your chosen method of mounting, in my case, the little wedge. As you can see, Seastar is constantly measuring the body angle here too. So you can adjust the wedge or whatever other method you're using until the calculated latitude angle matches the measured angle from the gyro. Don't spend time trying to get absolute precision right now in the daytime. Once it's dark, we'll get Seastar to measure this again using the stars. So using the wedge elevation knob, adjust the angle in the display until you match the desired position. Then press switch. Seastar will prompt that it needs to close the arm and reset the Seastar to the home position ready for EQ mode. So go ahead and do that now, and this will create a rough alignment, and once it's dark, we'll use the stars to do that full alignment. Now you'll note there's no mention of using the secondary camera on the Seastar 30 for polar alignment. Actually, after some tests and further thought, we think using the gyro in the main camera gives a quicker and more accurate alignment. So we've settled on this method for Seastar, and of course this is beneficial for the Seastar 50, which doesn't have that second camera. Once it's dark, we can then set up Seastar for polar alignment. Initially, all you need to do is roughly align the telescope to the pole using your Mark 1 eyeball, a compass, or any other method you want, like a laser pointer or even a well-known landmark. But it only needs to be a rough alignment at this stage. Now, with Seastar powered on and the app connected, go back to the Advanced Features menu and re-enter the Mount Mode setup, till you get to the polar alignment view again. Carry out a quick check that the latitude angle still matches the calculated one, but again, don't sweat it if it's not absolutely aligned. We're going to fine tune this now. Next, press Get Polar Aligned Deviation. 
Seastar will open the arm of the telescope if it's in the park position and take three short samples of the sky above you and then displays the measure alignment error to the pole on the screen. Now you can tweak the azimuth and elevation angles of your mount until the measured error is as close to zero as you can get. I was easily able to get within a degree which is more than adequate for equatorial mode at this focal length and exposure time. Remember, you are physically moving the elevation and azimuth position of the telescope. There's no need to use the scope joystick controls, you're just going to simply adjust the elevation and azimuth of the wedge only, not the C-star position itself. You will notice the error values changing as you move the mount to alignment, as C-star is constantly measuring the sky while you're doing this. There's no measure move refresh loop to go through like ASI Air. If you look at these values here in the demo video, you can see the azimuth angle is changing as I move the scope to the pole. C-star will show if you're left or right of the pole, or if you're low or high of the polar position. Now, move the mount until you have the offset error as low as you can, and then you can simply exit the polar alignment screen, and then use the telescope as normal. Remember that C-star's focal length is quite short, and so some error is acceptable in polar alignment without major impact on image quality. But it's worth noting that the bigger the error, the shorter the exposure times you'll be able to use without star trailing or any drop frames. So it's worth putting a little effort into it, especially if you're hankering for longer exposures. Now, I've seen a few questions about all sky polar alignment and sea star. And yes, ZWO are looking at this as a future feature. But it's worth noting that the way C-Star carries out its polar alignment might help you if your polar view is blocked. As C-Star is using the gyro for initial latitude adjustment and takes three high angle images of the sky above you to measure your polar deviation, this means it's not looking directly at the pole. And this may help if your view to the pole is blocked. I'll cover more of this off as we continue towards release and we also refine the equatorial mode feature too. And I do recommend you experiment with this as I think it might help those of you who have limited views to the pole. So let's take a look at the initial process setup for imaging. If you are well polar aligned, you can extend the exposure times of your C-star. And you can change this here in the advanced features menu. You'll want to do this before you start imaging, as once you change the value, it will redo the dark frame calibration. And at 30 seconds, this will take a little bit longer than normal. Right now, the maximum exposure time is 30 seconds, but in the very near future, this will be increased to 60. And from my initial test in equatorial mode, this will open up a whole new world for C-Star. You can use the Sky Atlas in the same way as before, and now the mount will allow access to targets overhead, which was not possible in the alt azimuth mode. This opens up a huge area of the sky for you and really is one of the biggest benefits of the equatorial mode. So choose a target, press go to, and the mount will move and refine its position and its till it's centered on the object. Now it will do its normal routine of dark frame calibration, autofocus, and then start to capture images. It's as simple as that. Another thing to note for your setup process is that horizontal calibration is no longer as important when you're in alt azimuth mode, but do try to make sure the mount is reasonably level to minimize any offset as the C-star rotates around the pole during the evening. So what about test results? Well, I found the new polar alignment tools to be really easy to use, and in some ways easier than ASI Air. And that's saying something, as the ASI Air really is pretty simple. The gyro alignment of the latitude angle is a really cool feature, and do note that you can do this in the daytime too, if you don't want to immediately switch back to alt azimuth mode. The mount mode is sticky, so once you're in equatorial mode, it'll stay there until you command it back. Oh yes, don't forget to switch modes back. If you do try to use alt azimuth mode with the mount in equatorial mode, you'll get some very, very strange results. Don't ask me how I know. So if you do get some odd results and you've been using equatorial mode and then you're back in alt azimuth mode, do check that has been changed before emailing the support line. Polar alignment is also really easy as C-Star is measuring the angle constantly. So you can just tweak the direction of the mount and azimuth and elevation using that sort of wedge elevation knob to give it a nudge onto the polar position. 
The display is pretty easy to understand too, and if you move the mount nice and gently, and then watch the numbers, you'll find it really easy to bring them pretty close to zero without too much difficulty. If you want, you can also hit the align command again, and it'll redo the alignment using the three polar alignment checkpoints using the main camera, and then you can see if the measured alignment is any different. However, in real world tests, I've found doing the measurement once, and then aligning until I get to zero in elevation and azimuth was more than adequate to get me nice round stars and no dissemble frame rotation for many hours of imaging. Since the last video, we've also been extensively testing the new equatorial mode on C-Star 50, and I'm happy to say it works really, really well too. As you can see from the images here, the results are pretty impressive. Using the new C-Star EQ mode on both models, I found that I can get little to no field rotation depending on how high the target is, and also access objects overhead that I couldn't get access to before in all azimuth mode. Setup for equatorial mode is also quick and simple once you've installed some additional items like a wedge or other form of elevation system. Um, ZWO don't have any updates at the moment on their own accessories for EQ mode. I do know they're still actively working on this and I'll bring news as soon as I have anything to share. Now I know the next question is, okay, that's all looking amazing, Simon. Fantastic. When is it coming? Well, I think we're pretty close now and I don't think it'll be too long before the beta testers will get their first access to it. And then not long after that, we'll see a production release if all the testers feedback is good. So. Keep watching the official Seastar Facebook pages very closely and we'll update you as soon as we're ready. And also to dispel a few myths, equatorial mode will be available for both the Seastar 30 and the Seastar 50 on initial release and for both Android and Apple platforms at no additional charge. I'll give another update as soon as I've anything major to share with you. So do hit that subscribe button right now to keep up to date with all the new posts and click the like button to show me that this was useful to you. And of course, let me know in the comments below how you plan to use your equatorial mode for your C-Star and how do you plan to mount it? Are you gonna buy a wedge? Have you got an equatorial telescope you're gonna to mount to it? Or have you got some other fancy method that you're using? I've seen some really, really interesting DIY versions, so I'm really looking forward to seeing those. I hope you enjoyed this update into this new area of C-Star feature development, and it gives you a feel for the work that's going on behind the scenes into making C-Star a tool capable of much more advanced in imaging. Uh, it's been good to be able to do these uh, information updates for you, and I really have to thank ZWO for letting me do that. And the feedback you've been providing has been absolutely invaluable to us while we've been developing this feature. Now, don't forget that we'll be in Neef and Neak on the 5th through to the 8th of April in Suffern, New York, and we'll be there with the whole crew for both shows and really looking forward to showing you more of Seastar there, and of course, discussing equatorial mode. Hope you enjoyed this glimpse into our feature development. Do stay tuned for further updates on equatorial mode. Until then, wishing you a beautiful, clear evening from New Zealand.